the important thing for in terms of spleen volume is to recognize that for patients with myelofibrosis their spleens are really massively enlarged. The average normal spleen volume is 150 to 200 cubic centimetres. On this study, the mean spleen volume for patients at baseline was 2,400. So these patients have spleens that are more than 10 times their normal size. So physically accommodating that size of spleen in your abdomen is very um, difficult. It causes a lot of symptoms. Um, it causes a lot of discomfort, it's difficult to eat food, it causes a lot of pain in other parts of the body and it is associated as well as a physical feature of the disease. It changes your appearance. Uh, for women in particular they can look pregnant and so that's very distressing. It's also a key element of uh, response criteria as drawn up by the International Working Group. So a spleen volume reduction of 35% equates to a reduction in palpable length of 50%, which is a key response criteria. So um, whilst perhaps a surprising endpoint to choose for a study, it is the most striking feature of this condition and it is uh, causing symptoms causing patients more awareness of their disease and body disfigurement as well. So I think it is a meaningful endpoint. Patients with myelofibrosis uh, typically have a shortened disease, uh, shortened survival. And uh, for the patients who entered the COMFORT 1 and the COMFORT 2 trial, their likely survival is going to be less than 40 months. What do patients die of? Well, they die of a combination of different things. About one-fifth of patients die of leukemia. Some patients die from disease progression, so their bone marrow progressively gets stiffer, if you like, and then their blood cell production drops and then they may die as a of a complication, for example, bleeding or overwhelming infection. A proportion of patients die from other events. If you look at um, the data across all of patients with myelofibrosis, so this means low risk as well as patients with only one IPSS score, only about 50% of patients are actually dying of their disease. I suspect for patients who were entered into these studies it would be a higher number because they're patients for whom the disease is naturally accelerating anyway. So, But the studies weren't powered to show a difference in overall survival. Although if we follow the patients for longer we would expect to see some hints with regard to that. I think um, as somebody who's got a lot of experience now in treating these patients with ruxolitinib, it's actually not only about survival, but for these patients now they have an improvement in their quality of life. It's the quality of life that becomes very important to them as well. So with regard to thrombocytopenia, uh, that was already identified and expected as a mode of action of a JAK inhibitor to be a potential cause of concern for people treating patients with myelofibrosis with an agent like roxolitinib. In the COMFORT 1 and the COMFORT 2 trials, patients had to have at least a platelet count of 100,000 to enter the study and many patients uh, therefore were excluded from the study probably approximately 25 percent of the patient population. In terms of managing thrombocytopenia on the drug the way this is typically managed would be by dose interruption or dose reduction and many patients are treated with the drug and may have a platelet count of less than 100 but are safe and stable and not showing an excess risk of bleeding. So usually one would manage this with using a, a lower dose, the platelet count recovers and you may then uh, use a dose intermediate between the dose that was causing the thrombocytopenia and the dose at which the platelet count recovered.
that's actually defined by the study. So the study has a clear algorithm on managing thrombocytopenia, which was clearly quite successful. Um, so if patients' platelet counts dropped below 50, they had to stop. Um, I certainly have patients whose platelet counts are running between 50 and 75 who are on a stable dose of drug, who continue to uh, derive benefits from the drug and who aren't suffering serious bleeding complications.